G.I. Joe fans, Joe Motion Videos 82 here. It is time for another G.I. Joe toy review. And boy, I don't know how many times I've shot this video. <laughs> no, the app I'm using was screwing up. Uh, then YouTube wouldn't let me upload. I'm sorry, guys, really. Uh, but thank you for being patient and being understanding. That is... Uh, really important to me and I'm, I'm glad that you guys are are that way it um, made this whole ordeal a lot easier uh, today is a special review uh, I did a collaboration with um, they gone that's his screen name uh, I've known him for a, a little over a year now and um, he's a veteran of the United States Army and uh, he was a parachute rigger. So he asked me to review Crazy Legs. And I was more than happy to do that. And if you have a, a suggestion for a review, uh, let me know. I will be happy to get to it uh, to do that if I have the action figure. And if it's complete. Or even a vehicle or playset. Um, there was one that was uh, reviewed or asked about several or about a year ago, and I haven't forgotten about you. It was for the tactical battle platform. I'm saving that for this summer, so uh, I'm definitely going to cover that. And I remember who requested that, so um, I'll get that out to you. I promise. So today. We're looking at the 1987 Crazy Legs. He was a part of the 6 Series. He was available from 87 to 89 um, when he was discontinued. Very interesting with his cards. He had a, um, he's a three card variant. One had the Fridge promo. The other one was a um, Battle Ribbon promo. And the third one was the Super Trooper promo. And... I have heard a lot about um, things about Battle Ribbons lately, uh, especially on HCC788's live stream, but I have yet to see one. So, the card variant I have is the Fridge, and we'll look at that a little bit closer during the review. So he first made his comic book appearance in uh, his first cover appearance, I should say. He was in um, issue number 71, but uh, they gone found, uh, did a, more research on him. He was also in issue 69 and 70, 74, 108, and 109. So that's some strong work there, buddy. Thank you. Great coverage on that. His original retail price is two dollars forty three cents. Uh, he is very available on the aftermarket. There are several of them out there for sale. Whether or not you find him complete is a different story, and we will cover that. There is an accessory that is the bane of collectors' existence, and it has been the bane of my existence today, <laughs> trying to get that thing to cooperate. So, uh. They gone wrote up a very nice what I'm calling a thesis on um, uh, parachute riggers. So I'm just going to read a few excerpts from this. Uh, it says a parachute rigger's job is to pack chutes for individual jumpers and equipment supp and supplies to include food, water, boxes of equipment, ammo, and etc. Or whatever else is needed, uh, you know, de um, demolitions equipment, uh, first aid, of course, things of that nature. Riggers have um, even have chutes that can send vehicles and tanks out of a bird. To do a rigger's job, or to do this, a rigger. Uh, goes through uh, goes to 10 weeks of basic training then off to AIT which is advanced individual training 
uh, where they will spend the next 16 weeks at the quartermaster school at Fort Lee, Virginia for training on how to inspect, pack, rig, recover, store, maintain, uh, and maintain aerial delivery equipment. So these guys are the ones you want to be your best friend. I'm really starting to think that if you want your shoot packed right, better buy these dudes a drink anytime you see them. But not the day that he's packing your shoot. You want his mind sharp. <laughs> oh, fun fact. Uh, he, this is a theory. He says, I, I think it's true, but not sure that it was meant to be this way. But I think the reason Crazy Legs is red is because riggers, when they are in their shops, they work wearing red hats. Very interesting theory. Uh, I would like to know that, you know, Crazy Legs is clad in red. Oh, uh, he says, in short, like uh, Crazy Legs, like other Joes, is a badass, and I happen to agree. Uh, Crazy Legs is a static line trooper, meaning he jumps using a static line. Basically, his chute has a cord that gets hooked to the bird. And after he jumps, the cord um, begins to come out of the pack and pulls tight and opens the chute. So a static line jumper free falls for four seconds and the chute opens up um, when he jumps from a fixed wing bird in five seconds from a helicopter. And that, that makes a lot of sense. He needs that additional second to jump from a helicopter. I know that's not a long period of time, but thinking of terminal velocity, which is 32 feet a second, that will when he drops, it gives him an extra 32 feet to clear the rotor wash and the blades of the helicopter so his chute won't get tangled up in it. And typically they jump from a height of 800 to 1200 feet. And it usually takes around one to two minutes for your average size paratrooper to hit the ground. If you're a little bit smaller and lighter, it takes longer. But if you catch an updraft, that takes even longer to come down. So you don't want to be up in the air for very long. So I'm sh sure that's why all these brilliant military-minded people determined um, 800 to 1,250 feet for... Camera keeps winking out. Uh, for uh, that height to determine the mass of the terminal velocity and safe landing and whatnot. And so you don't want to be up in the air too long. You know, you become a target. And also alerts the troops of uh, enemies where you're at. Uh, mentions that uh, ripcord and free fall are uh, halo jumpers, which is high altitude, low opening, which means uh, they fly above radar and they jump above radar. So they free fall for an incredibly long time. They need oxygen because they're up in the thinner atmosphere. And then they open up their chutes before they hit the ground obviously. <laughs> um, he didn't wrote, write that. I was paraphrasing. Uh, and um, my dad did a few halo jumps and he told me that uh, also their backpacks or their parachute packs have an altimeter on it that automatically opens the chute if just in case you don't pull the rip cord if you're passed out. So you, you still have a safe landing, even if you pass out. So that's this um, very nicely written article. I really appreciate that, Dagon. I am going to file that with this binder full of my notes from other reviews. And I'm going to keep this. I really appreciate it. Very well written. So let's go ahead and get into this review. Alrighty, so here he is. Very nice looking action figure. He has great detail 
on him. I am surprised that he wasn't more popular. For me, I passed him up as a kid because the the name Crazy Legs. I, I just didn't like it, but kids are fickle. He's wearing this quilted red suit. Uh, well, actually, it's not a suit, but uh, padding over his body. He also has on his legs to keep the parachute, parachute straps from hurting too much. But this quilting goes all the way around his body, on his shoulders and his elbows. This is making me think that it is a type of a Kevlar armor that um, is often used with smoke jumpers for when they to protect them when they crash through trees, keep them from getting gouged and stabbed and beat up and cut up, and they also wear it up around their neck. So that's what I'm thinking this is. Uh, he is wearing this nicely nice red helmet. Uh, there we go. He has a silly little grin on his face, and it's mentioned in the file card. The helmet has goggles that are sculpted on. Nice paint applications for this figure. Uh, this The goggles remind me of the Cobra Viper. He has pouches on each arm. Uh, one on his right leg. And here on his left leg, he has some carabiners up here, and these are ammunition pouches. And he's wearing jump boots. I don't know if that detail is popping up or not. But um, he has straps on those boots. Uh, he has a stiletto up here. Very nice. That's a nice looking stiletto, by the way. And what is G.I. Joe without hand grenades? He has ammunition pouches on each side. A good looking figure. I re I'm really impressed with him. Uh, he also has these gloves that are painted, and it's not uh, his hand. They actually sculpted gloves, they just didn't paint over his hand. So he is a very, very good figure. They took their time with that one, and it is surprising he isn't as popular. He has this really nicely sculpted parachute pack right here in front with the quick release. Uh, he also came with this uh, machine gun, which is an EM4 machine gun, real world. Uh, it's chopped down to a, a paratrooper style. The barrel is not actually short. Most of the barrel is inside the weapon. So he still has the distance and accuracy of a rifle, but in a submachine gun style. Night vision scope. And this right here is the bane of collectors. You see it clips right onto the end here. It's a very thin piece of plastic. It could break real easy. It's intended to be folded up, but it doesn't like to do that. It comes off. So this is quite often missing and uh, harder to find on the aftermarket and expensive. His parachute is, is a real bugger to put on. Um, I'm not sure how, how they do it. Uh, the instructions are printed here on his file card, but they're torn off. I'm going to have to look on yojo.com to figure out how it's done. Uh, I remember watching HCC fumble with that. It was, it's hard to do. Uh, and you can see this is the fridge promo. So his file card reads, codename Crazy Legs, Assault Trooper. Uh, file name Thomas David O. Uh, serial number 870289277. Primary military specialty infantry, secondary specialty parachute rigor. Those two should be opposite of each other. Um, birthplace, Fort Dodge, Iowa. He is an E4, a specialist. Middle paragraph. 
This is one of the stupider written uh, file cards. Middle paragraph reads, it could have been, Crazy Legs could have been the greatest organist in the world if his fingers hadn't been too short. Who cares? It has nothing to do with anything. Nothing to do with his job. Nothing. Airborne Rangers don't care, neither do I, how perfectly you can play box, Takata, and Fugue, and D minor. They're only concerned with willingness to jump out of a helicopter into a hot LZ, which is a landing zone, with nothing but a rifle, a couple of grenades, and best wishes from your commanding officer. Crazy Legs is, of course, Airborne Ranger qualified and has been cross-trained as a forward artillery observer. Okay, so he's a singing parachuter ranger. <laughs> Not singing, but a... Um, Organist. Uh, bottom paragraph in quotations. There can be, we can be storming uh, a hardened position right into the right into the teeth of an enfilade of green tracer so thick that the, in the air that you can smell the magnesium AP anti personnel mines going off with intersecting cones of fire. Bouncing Betty's the works. Bouncing Betty is a interesting uh, landmine you step on the activator activator it pops up out of the ground at waist level then detonates and crazy legs comes ducking and weaving through all of this with a weird light in his eyes and humming at a, sl a selection from johann sebastian bach that's why he has that weird smile on his face okay so as many times as I had to do that review, I'm sure this action figure has been played with more in the past two days than it has in several years. And I think I have that file card memorized by heart now. Okay. Now, it's time for my favorite segment, Byron's Gripes. Alrighty. Now, when I say incomplete, that is referring to him not having the butt stock. There are a lot of them out there, and I, I just got tired of saying butt stock, so I'm just leaving it out. So, an incomplete action figure, seven ninety nine to thirteen ninety nine. Not bad. Incomplete. Uh, with with just his shoot, he doesn't have a gun. Twenty five bucks. Sorry, you'll be sitting on that one for a little bit. The parachute and gun, which is incomplete, five dollars. A complete uh, crazy legs, twenty four. 70 to 29.95 not bad at all really it isn't because you have the that one piece i'm not going to say buttstock and at least you have that and you don't have to chase it down to complete your action figure incomplete with a file card 12.99 to 20 bucks okay you got a file card but still it's not it not what you're looking for complete with the file card $24.95 to $27.99. There is the deal of the day right there. You get the file card and he is complete. Done deal. No more. You don't have to search for it. Uh, unless you do have that one small piece and you need the rest of the action figure, which happened to be some cases with me where I had the accessories but no figure. When I, I bought a big bag of uh, parts and stuff. And a lot of accessories came with it, but I didn't have the action figures. So it helps. Uh, his parachute standing alone, $399. A carded figure, uh, $150. Not bad for a carded figure, uh, seeing that the other carded ones are much, much higher. I saw a Snake Eyes sell at auction for $1,250. I kid you not.
that was insane. And I wonder if it got paid for us or if somebody's got caught up in the thrill of the auction. An unpunched uh, card back with the action figure. It's mint on card, $85. Now, I want to call bollocks on that one. I didn't read all uh, further into the detail on it or into the description. It could very well be a um, reproduction card where somebody took a near mint action figure and put it onto the reproduction card and is trying to pass it off. Or it could be the genuine card that's unpunched and somebody's given you a great deal with it. Uh, I would look into carded figures very closely, look at the pictures closely, check for age, um, reasonable wear, and read the description, see if it is authentic. There's a lot of these reproduction cards look really, really good. Uh, it's really hard to tell from the picture until you hold it and find that the card stock is different. So ask questions on carded figures. So one that is loose and incomplete, uh, no accessories whatsoever, $4.79 to uh, $4.95. I say that's a great deal. Honestly, it is. Why? Because you could customize him into Night Force figure and, uh, and Night Force colors, and there you go. Um, I, I plan to do that. Um, because Night Force is too blasted expensive. And I know that Nowhere in the foreseeable future will I ever own a complete set of Night Force. Just because of the high prices. So there you have it. That's the review. Uh, I wish I had more childhood memories about him, but I don't. Because um, I never had him, never knew anybody who did. But I do recall seeing him on the pegs and passing him up for uh, Naga Hyde. Yes, I, I didn't have a, a Dreadnought, so I, I got Naga Hyde instead, and I can't believe I did this as well. I passed him up for Grunt version 3, because I didn't have Grunt anymore. I had one, but he broke, and my mom threw him away. His hands broke off. But it's still an action figure you could play with, but no, she threw him away. So, um, yeah, I regret not buying him as a kid now, but I have him as an adult where I could really appreciate him. So, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Also, look me up on Coffee. It'll be down in the description. Leave me a one-time tip or as many tips as you, you care to. Any dollar amount will get you into the ranks of uh, channel supporter. And channel supporters will be... I'll be hold uh, special giveaways just for them. As well as anybody who subscribes is enrolled into a giveaway as well. And when I reach 500 subscribers, I'll be holding another giveaway. And I promise it will be a very fine piece. And um, that's it. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either or is fine. It is constructive criticism. and also lets YouTube know that you are watching. Leave me a comment. I respond to the comments. I've developed a lot of great friendships from people leaving comments, and I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys are a great bunch of people, uh, arguably the best subscribers out there in the YouTube community, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So... Thank you, everybody who has served in the armed forces uh, throughout the UN. I really appreciate your service. Um, it's it's not a nice nice world, but it's the only one we have, and you guys protect it. And I can't thank you enough. I am indebted to you. So. This has been Jill Motion Videos 82 signing off. Don't forget to be kind to everybody and be kind to animals especially. Take care. Bye-bye.